So if you have an iPad Pro and you want a good keyboard case, maybe one with a trackpad that works with the smart connector on the back, well, you basically have three options. You have the most expensive Magic Keyboard, Apple's first party, Magic Trackpad, Magic Keyboard, and floating iPad. You also have the older Smart Keyboard Folio option, which I used for a long time and I might be getting back into it. And you also have the Logitech Combo Touch. I wanna to review all three of these and compare and explain why I'm actually going back to the Smart Keyboard Folio over the Magic Keyboard after several years. So let's talk about the Smart Keyboard Folio. Now I have the 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro and I'm gonna be talking about pricing and use cases for the largest iPad. You can get all of these cases for the 11 inch iPad Pro and they'll also work with the iPad Air because that also has the smart connector. But when it comes to portability and typing, the 12.9 inch is what I'm referring to. The Smart Keyboard Folio actually launched in 2018 alongside the first iPad Pro with Face ID, the one that got rid of the home button, the first model to do it. And I used the Smart Keyboard Folio all the way up until Apple launched the Magic Keyboard and I really loved it. I wrote many, many things, even a book, on this keyboard. I feel like the typing ability is great. And some of the things I love the most about the Smart Keyboard Folio is it's one of the thinnest and lightest cases with a full keyboard. You can actually put the keyboard all the way behind it without taking the case off and then actually use the tablet like a tablet. And it exposes the edges of the iPad Pro so you can charge things like your Apple Pencil with no problem even using this little Papermate Canoopsy Apple Pencil grip. I'll put the link in the description for that. Of course, the biggest omission for the Smart Keyboard Folio is there was no trackpad. And this was before trackpad support, officially or even unofficially, with the iPad Pro. Two other negatives is no backlight keyboard on the Smart Keyboard Folio. And I've noticed with my 12.9 inch, when I'm trying to get it out, it sometimes just pops out of the case randomly and it's a little less sturdy than I remember. When I first got it, it was with my 11 inch iPad Pro and I feel like that smaller size and maybe because it was lighter, it didn't come off as much. But with the Smart Keyboard Folio, you get two viewing angles. Again, not as many angles as you get with the Magic Keyboard or Logitech Combo Touch. I always enjoy typing on this keyboard. It is a little mushier feeling because it's not hard keys, but I found it easy to type on and I never had to worry about spilling anything on this keyboard. It's kind of this material, I don't even know exactly what it is. It's not fabric, but it's not plastic. But I do know it was basically indestructible and I never worried about messing it up. And because it uses the smart connector, you never have to charge it or pair it via Bluetooth. And like I mentioned before, when you actually close the iPad in the smart keyboard folio, it is actually super thin and light, the lightest and thinnest of the three cases that I'm talking about today. So for type ability, I would give it about a three out of five. It's not as good as the Magic Keyboard or even the Logitech Combo Touch, but still pretty good to type on. For portability, I think it's five out of five. It's thin and light. You can just throw this in a bag. It's the thinnest of any of the cases I'm talking about today. And versatility, I would say this is about a four out of five. Again, you could put the keyboard behind, use it like a tablet. You do feel the keyboard back there, but because it's deactivated, it's not a big deal. It's not affecting what I'm doing on the iPad. And it's extremely easy, sometimes too easy, to get it out of the smart keyboard folio case. And so again, versatility, I would give about a four out of five. But an important category for me is lap ability. Can you use this in your lap and actually type? And I would say its lap ability is about a four out of five. It's a little awkward, especially at some angles, and you do have to kind of get the distance just right. But because the iPad is so close to the keyboard on here, you can have it in your lap, type comfortably in most chairs and scenarios. And again, that's something I do with it very often, especially out on the patio. So let's move on to the Magic Keyboard. This debuted in 2020, two years after that Smart Keyboard Folio, and it was the most expensive at a whopping $350. And that price has never gone down. If you want the Magic Keyboard for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you're gonna pay $350. I do like that it comes in white and black, and this has been my white one for the past two years. Still holds up pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a few smudges on the white Magic Keyboard, but again, overall, looks really good. Now, one of the big selling features of the Magic Keyboard is this floating design where you can have an infinite, quote unquote, adjustment angle for the iPad Pro, and it's just kind of floating above the keyboard in midair. It looks super cool. If your main goal is to just look the coolest using an iPad, yeah, the Magic Keyboard is the one to go with. I will say the design is top notch, super sturdy. Even after several years of having this, the hinge is still rock solid. I never have to worry about that. And one of the huge benefits of the Magic Keyboard, which I do miss using the Smart Keyboard Folio, is this additional USB-C port, which you can only use for charging. It doesn't work for data, but having an additional USB-C port so you can charge it, Apple, they know what they're doing. They place it on the opposite side as the iPad USB-C port. I do really like that option. The Magic Keyboard also has backlit keys, which is really nice. The Logitech Combo Touch also has backlit keys, but remember, Smart Keyboard Folio does not. The Magic Keyboard also just has the best typing experience of any of these cases and keyboards. 
If your biggest goal, no matter what, is that typing and trackpad feel and performance, yes, Magic Keyboard has it. And where the Magic Keyboard falls a little bit is portability, thinness, and lightness. This thing is heavy and it's thick. It might not look like it from just putting it side by side with the Smart Keyboard Folio, but feeling the weight of this thing, it is heavier than my 14 inch MacBook Pro. And when I'm trying to fit it into some of the backpacks, you really feel the thickness and the weight of the Magic Keyboard. Now, if this was your only device and you weren't bringing a laptop, say on a trip, then yeah, Magic Keyboard might be worth it. But if I'm just using it around the house and I have my laptop around, I have my Mac Studio, the heaviness and weight of this just prevents me from reaching out and taking it with me when I'm trying to do something quick out on the patio. So like I'm saying, typeability, five out of five. This is the best feeling iPad keyboard you're gonna get. Portability, I'd give this thing about a two out of five. Yes, you could put it in most backpacks and it's not super thick, but it is very heavy and thick enough that it becomes cumbersome, especially if you're trying to manage multiple devices in a backpack. Now versatility, I give this thing a two out of five. I mean, this is really the only configuration you're gonna use it in. It's not like the keyboard folds back behind the iPad so you can use it in tablet mode. If you wanna just use the tablet by itself, you do have to take it out of the Magic Keyboard case. Now, thankfully, that's really easy to do. The magnets hold it on super securely, so when the iPad is on there, you're not worried about it falling, but you can also take it out relatively easily. But number four, when it comes to lap ability, I do give this thing a four out of five stars. I can use this in my lap just like it's a laptop, and I don't really miss anything. The trackpad is top notch, the keyboard's at a good distance when you're sitting in a chair or on a lounge chair, and so lap ability, four out of five, very good. Number three, let's talk about this guy, the Logitech Combo Touch. Now this case is a little different because it's actually more like a case. It actually pops into this case and covers most of the edges on the iPad. I do appreciate that the top side is uncovered so you can charge your Apple Pencil and there's nothing in between the pencil and the iPad. And if you want a little more protection, this Combo Touch is actually pretty nice. But the coolest thing about the Logitech Combo Touch is that the keyboard is detachable. So you can attach the keyboard when you want to type, use the trackpad, and just simply pull it off very easily to use it just in tablet mode. Now when you're putting it on a desk, there's actually this flap in the back that you can adjust the angle that the iPad sits, and it's really convenient. Going back to angle, I do wish the Magic Keyboard with iPad gave you a little more angles, especially wanting to push it back. Sometimes I might be standing up, and this is on a like kitchen island, and I like to bend the iPad a little farther back, and this just doesn't give you enough of that angle. Now you don't get a ton of different angles with this little prop in the back, but you can go back pretty far, definitely a farther back angle than the Magic Keyboard, even if just by a little bit. I will say the type ability, it feels really good. The keys feel great, almost on par with the Magic Keyboard, and the trackpad is also really nice. And the keys are basically the same size as the Magic Keyboard, so it feels great. You can see the trackpad is actually a little larger, which is nice, and you even get media keys on the Logitech Combo Touch. So you get the play pause, skip forward, you can get a home button on here, screen brightness setting, all right on hardware keys, which is super nice. So if media keys and quick access to brightness is something that you really want, Logitech Combo Touch is great. And you can see Apple could probably add that on the Magic Keyboard, but if you angle the iPad the most it goes on the Magic Keyboard, you see it would cover this level of function keys. So type ability, I would give this a four out of five stars as well. It feels really good to type on. I like the clickiness. And if you like the Magic Keyboard, I think you'll like the Logitech Combo Touch. Portability is pretty good. It's a little thicker than the Smart Keyboard Folio, closer to the Magic Keyboard, but it is definitely lighter than the Magic Keyboard. So I actually give this portability a little higher. I'll say about a three out of five stars. But when it comes to versatility, I do have to give the Logitech Combo Touch the edge. Being able to take off the keyboard, use the tablet just in tablet mode, but it's still in a case, really nice. I do kind of wish you could put the keyboard behind the screen again. If you try to bend it back there, the keyboard just falls off. So versatility, I'll still give it four out of five stars. If you like using it both in keyboard, Magic Trackpad, and just tablet mode, this is a great option. But here comes the category that breaks this one for me, which is lap ability. Because it has that longer keyboard area and the trackpad, and then you have the little stand on the back, using this thing on a lap, it just doesn't fly. I've tried in multiple chairs. If you're using a recliner, maybe, but even then, it's just wobbly. The keyboard kind of wobbles back and forth. This back kickstand, it's not great for being in a chair. And so unfortunately, I have to give the Combo Touch a one out of five stars when it comes to lap ability. Now, if you were just gonna be using this on a desk and then just taking the tablet away when you wanna use it away from a desk, the Combo Touch is a great option and might be your best option if you never plan to use it on a lap. But again, lapability is big for me. I like to use my iPad when I'm outside on the patio or sitting on a sofa. 
And so this one just doesn't cut it. So if you're looking for a keyboard for your iPad Pro and you wanna make sure it uses the smart connector so you don't have to pair and charge a separate Bluetooth keyboard, these are your three options. The Magic Keyboard, the Logitech Combo Touch, and the Smart Keyboard Folio. Which one should you get? Well, if you just simply want the best typing experience, high lapability, and you don't care about thickness or weight, this is the only device you're carrying around, yeah, Magic Keyboard is the way to go. Best typing, great trackpad, looks really cool in white, and the design is just top notch. It's really great. But if you want something that's lappable and also the lightest and most portable option, the 2018, so five year old, Smart Keyboard Folio is actually a great option and it's the one I'm gonna start using again with my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. One of the main things I do with my iPad is editing podcasts. And so I wanna make sure it's in tablet mode. But sometimes I need to do some podcast publishing tasks and I want that keyboard. And so I can just flip this back around. I have my keyboard and not having the trackpad, I do miss it. After using the Magic Keyboard for the last three years, going back to the Smart Keyboard Folio, I immediately missed the trackpad, but I'm slowly getting acclimated to just using my finger on the screen, bringing out the keyboard when I need to, and then using it in tablet mode. And I found I use this big iPad, the 12.9 inch, more often because this case itself is just lighter and more portable, even around the house. I prefer bringing this around and carrying it around than the Magic Trackpad. Pricing wise, the Smart Keyboard Folio is also one of the best options. This one is $200 for the 12.9 inch version. The Logitech Combo Touch is about $225, although you can get it on Amazon for about 200. I'll put a link in the video description. And the Magic Keyboard, while it has a great design, comes in at $350 for the 12.9 inch model. As always, it depends on what you need, how much you travel, how much portability is an issue for you. But for me, after three years of using the Magic Keyboard pretty much daily, I'm going back to the Smart Keyboard Folio. I'll lose the trackpad, but I just like using my iPad more when it's this thin and light. Let me know what you think. If you've been using some of these keyboards for a long time, which is your favorite, drop it down in the comments. And if there's an updated version of maybe the Smart Keyboard Folio or Magic Keyboard this fall, you bet I'll cover it right here on the channel. Thanks for tuning in. And before you go, might wanna check out this video right here. It's pretty good.